by yeah. bayan is the Tagalog name for a writing system that was shared across a lot of different ethnic groups and languages in the Philippines and pre-colonial Philippines. It is a descendant of the same writing system that was used to write Sanskrit, huh. which is itself a descendant of the Phoenician alphabet. So, and like in a really distant way, it's actually related to the English alphabet huh. by thousands of years. Wow. This is my friend Mark. I discovered him on Instagram drawing an incredibly beautiful Philippine script known as Babayan. As you're about to learn, Babayan is an ancient writing system widely used by ancestors of the Philippine Islands before they were colonized by the Spaniards. Even though Babayan is no longer used as an official script, there has been a resurgence among present-day Filipinos who appreciate not only its beauty, but its connection to a past that has since been lost to us. I reached out to Mark, hoping he would educate me on the history of Babayan. In typical Filipino style, he went above and beyond. Not only did he immerse me in a riveting conversation about the importance of Babayan to our Philippine heritage, he also taught me how to write it and then fed me a delicious Filipino meal. The reason why I'm here is because you do this incredible, I want to call it an art form, but it's not even an art. I mean, it is obviously, but it's also, it's writing, it's communication, mm -hmm. it's language that was in a way lost. Can I say that? Yeah, yeah. Was First, I thank you for saying, for hesitating to call it an art form, mm. because I think it's really easy for people who learn and teach and like, you know, just like write and write by in to yeah. be considered artists because that the way they use it is via brushes and things like that. Right. But honestly, you don't have to be one to, to appreciate the beauty of being able to think of it as just like, you know, a writing system. So let's go through it. The Indian sphere of influence yes. was really pervasive, right, as you can yeah. imagine. So it's, you know, it started in the Indian subcontinent, but like, you know, Hinduism had spread out to you know, the Philippines, mm -hmm. Southeast Asia, all of these places, you know, along with Buddhism and all of these things. And so that was kind of like the kind of like empire or like the set of empires, right? Yeah. That was the culture. And you can still see it in the way that the like Filipinos in the Southern Philippines, like their cultural dances are actually offshoots of like Hindu epic tales. After generations of evolution, it became its own thing. Every language that used it had its own name for it, but essentially it just oh. kind of meant writing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, by by means to trace or edge. And so kind of like to trace along, which actually in Ilocano is, is, is very beautiful because by by means the, the, the sea. So it's kind of like the edge of like where the water meets the, the, the earth and things like that. So it's like very, I know it's nice. It's beautiful. Um, and that's why it looks like the way it does. It actually, now that I think about it, it actually kind of does look like ocean waves. A lot of people say that specific characters are derived from like very specific things. So like the bee looks like a pair of breasts. People are like, okay, because it's like bye-bye, you know, yeah. like woman. Or like the la character looks very phallic. And as people people think it's because it's related to la la, you know, a yeah. man. They might be more legend than kind of like fact, but there's a lot of ways to interpret kind of just like the form of it. It was at its heyday in maybe like the mid 15, 1600s when some Spanish people came over and... <laughs> They were like, this is fine, but we have something better. It was used pretty pervasively and a lot of different reports on like what literacy was like back in the day. But some people say it was really, really high because of how easy it was to learn. It stayed alive throughout the colonial period because there were monks and friars who were really invested in kind of like, you know, propagating the faith and, you know, evangelizing. And they actually created these prayer books mm -hmm. called Doctrina Cristiana, which were like published in the 1500s. Yeah. And like one side was in Latin and the other side was in by buy-in right oh my gosh amazing yeah. yeah and they did that in multiple languages so like they actually did that for like the chinese filipinos who were in the area they did that for the tagalogs for the ilocanos and mm -hmm. things like that and so number one that was like you know native not yet filipinos but you know yeah. the, the the people who were who were there our ancestors that was their first touch with the catholic faith which yeah. is now most of what being Filipino is about sometimes. Mm -hmm. And it was also kind of evidence that like by buying was really just used, right? Mm. And that's kind of like when it stopped, right? That's when it that's when it stopped being used and quickly replaced by the Latin alphabet. Yeah. But because it stopped so abruptly, somebody who learns by buying today can actually go into one of those documents and read it without much problem. And that's also wild. that is wild, right? Yeah. And it also kind of like points to um how steady the languages of our ethnic groups have been mm. throughout the years, throughout mm -hmm. the centuries, which is actually pretty cool. Mm -hmm. It kind of died off. Mm. 
I think it's safe to call it a dead uh, a dead writing system. But there are you know ethnic groups, particularly in the Filipino highlands, places that it was kind of difficult for missionaries to go to, mm-hmm. that were able to preserve versions of their own kind of like writing system. So not necessarily by buy-in, but mm-hmm. you know their own tribes kind of like writing system, and yeah. so. There was always like this awareness that different writing systems existed, mm-hmm. especially in Malaysia, you know, Bali, like Balinese has its own writing system that's almost like their cousins, right? And Kawi scripts and things like that, which are like Malayic scripts that are basically part of the same family as Baibayan. And so like there, yeah. there's always been this awareness that it, it existed. Yeah. All of this information, scholars have been able to kind of just like keep kind of like information about it alive, at least to the extent where, you know, in the late 20th century when... We were born. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it sounds like it sounds like a historical period. Yeah, which it kind of is. <laughs> it, which now. it is now. When we were born, you know, like our generation, especially because Filipino Americans and our quest to always find more things about us. Yeah. You know, found it, or you know, are have been able to kind of just like reconnect with that yeah. in ways that are just a little bit more than the handful of ways that it continues to exist in the Philippines, mm. which has obviously like embrace it again because of this like renewed energy so like for example people who graduate from the university of the philippines mm-hmm. they don't have a graduation gown they actually have like a sash called a sablai and they have by buy they've always had by buy on it so like little ways that it exists right mm-hmm. logos of like cultural institution has it yeah. some of our revolutionary flags the designs incorporate by buy really so it's been you know it but um, in terms of like the enthusiasm for making sure that like kids know about it or whatever mm-hmm. you know small and so when I first started doing these festivals or whatever, mm-hmm. um, like, you know, these street festivals, these markets where I'm like a little artisan in the corner mm-hmm. and I have these like, you know, elder Filipinos walk by, they're just like, you know, this is the first time I'm seeing this in person, you know, which is like a crazy thing. Yeah. Yeah. How did you discover it? The internet. How does anybody discover anything yeah. these days? I mean, yeah. But there's... I mean, the first time that you came across it, were, mm-hmm. were you like searching about the Philippine culture and heritage and history? I feel like a lot of us who are kind of like born and raised in the States and used to look for kind of like, you know, things, anything about the Philippines, especially like in the 80s and 90s, like you had like the one video cassette in the library yeah about like oh here's what like the natives of the highlands look like and you know this type of stuff that (laughs) yeah filipinos do and like if it wasn't that then it's like stuff about us in world war ii or like the u.s in world war ii and so i was as a kid just like desperate for any kind of coverage of anything filipino Mm. if it was like artistic right if it was you know martial arts you know you you see all the the 90s was all about martial arts movies i'm just like is any of this filipino like no there's a lot of japanese there's a lot of chinese and so like anything that i can find online especially like in the early 2000s just kind of like perusing blogs and websites and then I came across you know a handful of people online who today are actually regarded as kind of like you know the kind of like the 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 people responsible for bringing it into this generation like these elder elder artists um, I wouldn't even call them elders because like they're contemporaries like you know people kind of like our age but like people who are kind of like quick to be like, oh my God, I would I, I can kind of like use the internet to tell people about my buy-in. There are these websites where you can kind of like type in your name and then like it'll like translate transliterate it into yeah. by buy-in and like, you know, short articles, short blog posts. And as the years went by, like people built on those and yeah. was able to refer to research by actual scholars and things like that. And so I was able to kind of like follow that thread and kind of like learn as much as I can. Honestly mm-hmm a lot of people of this generation who found out about it would probably have just started at the Wikipedia article about it, honestly, Mm -hmm. or, you know, one of those like minor, smaller websites and then kind of like built up their own understanding about it. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's how I did it too. Outside of like doing schoolwork and stuff, kind of just like practice. It's a relatively simple alphabet. It's a very yeah. s- relatively simple writing system when, you know, if compared to something like Chinese. Filipino as a language is very phonetic. And so honestly, it was one of the easier kind of like writing systems to kind of adopt. And I would just like write my notes in it sometimes. Yeah. Like, you know, practice writing my name. If I had somebody else like I'm talking to uh, and I had felt like doodling, I'd just be writing their name or something. That kind of progressed into just, you know, as a hobby, experimenting with brushes and, you know, experimenting with like markers and going and learning, you know, Adobe Illustrator so I can like do it digitally and mm. things like that. 
I kind of like developed this reputation in school, in my social circles as the guy who knew how to do that. Yeah. Because that's really nerdy. Mm -hmm. And it actually kind of coincided with this resurgence of people wanting to do tattoos and things like that and yeah. rediscovering kind of our tattoo tradition mm. and our indigenous aesthetic, right? Visual aesthetic. And so I started getting like requests from people in my social circles being like, hey, how do you write this? How do you write that? Right. Mm -hmm. I just got a tattoo. Can you spell check it? And um, sometimes uh, it's <laughs> even after the fact. Yeah. Oh, no. Like, oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. It's a reflection of like the readoption of <laughs> what it is. <laughs> Of, of you know of, of the writing system for our people and so yeah. kind of like it's a snapshot of like the way that we're trying to like reclaim it and, you know there's a little mm. bit of stumbling there's a little bit of reinterpretation <laughs> and yeah. I can't be I can't be mad at it but yeah right. so you know that kind of just translated into just being that guy who was just like can you write this out for me can you translate this this phrase and in the past couple of years it's been like it's gotten to the point where I wanted to be able to kind of establish myself, not just like as this ad hoc person who does this, but mm -hmm. maybe even kind of like start a visual language of my own. Mm. A lot of these Baibayan writers, Baibayan, you can call them artisans, right? Mm -hmm. They actually become artists by way of creating their own visual language. What does that mean exactly? Adopting a style or you ah. know, creating your own style. It's a very kind of malleable system. You, you know, you can tell when it's by Bayan, but I see an artist online who kind of like are inspired by Arabic script and they, they create like an Arabic style font for by Bayan and like they Got digitize it. it and stuff. You have artists who are really inspired by the way Chinese looks. And so you have like Chinese style by Bayan, right? It. We have artists who are taking logos of like various brands in the world and then they're just kind of like replacing it with the bye bye and equivalents and yeah. they're, they're really just like and I, I think that's really cool i think that's, that's cool art too. right yeah that's art that's um, where the art then comes in right and that's right. where art comes in and so like these people aren't just writers they're artists and yeah. and and so making that transition has been kind of like the theme of what i've been doing and establishing kind of like this you can call it brand, right? Establishing myself as as like a by by in uh, like artist in yeah. in the in the kind of like the web sphere or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, and just putting myself out there and like showing up to these like Filipino artist networking events and things like that um, yeah. around New York. I know that I have my own style, just like in my doodles and things like that. Yeah. And when I do these tattoo designs as favors, so I'm like, yeah. you know, maybe I can start just kind of like creating maps just like the way that cartographers create maps like you know in the modern world and mm. just like used by Ryan. I had spent time over this past kind of like season developing prints based off of like maps of parts of the United States that are really concentrated with Filipinos so I have like an NYC map I have like a LA map a, a Bay Area map with everything written in with um, everything written in by Bayan, yeah. That is um, a great idea. Yeah. Yeah, I bet I, it looks beautiful. I just finished like a Philippines map. And mm. like, I've been kind of like asking people like, what city should I do next? People are like, Seattle, Texas, mm -hmm. <laughs> Chicago, mm -hmm. <laughs> like Alaska, I think, yeah. right? Yes. Or like these big ones. And obviously people are like, oh, well, can you do these with like actual Filipino cities? I'm like, yeah, totally. What a gift. I, I mean, it, I, it, it's, I yeah. see it as that. I would just want to compare it to like, my journey to rediscover our culture is getting my parents like renewed energy you know just like yeah. little things like that you know just being able to walk past and see something that you had only heard about you know as as legend so to speak or, right you know completely legend because like they're just like i only realized like some people would say i i knew about it but i've never seen it with my own eye like what <laughs> no. the wall is so easy to kind of like break down and mm -hmm. i'm really excited about the fact that there are so many artisans and artists who are just picking it up so easily yeah. and like propagating it on, on Instagram and so yeah you know I used to be afraid of like oh my god if I put myself out there as an artist like am I gonna like be up against like all these other by by an artist because like you know mm -hmm. it's such a niche thing and if you stop being that one person then like you're all fighting over I'm like no that's not the point of this right it's yeah. bigger than all of us it's bigger than us yeah yeah <sighs> <sighs> love it okay actually you know what I'm getting really hungry yeah let's see what, <laughs> let's see what the food is about <laughs> 